Hi, my name is Denise McCartney. I'm from Washington University in St. Louis. And today we're going to do a really brief overview of two important policies, conflict of interest and research integrity. Let's start with conflict of interest. There are really many different kinds of conflict of interest, professional, academic, financial, and institutional, but we're going to focus on individual research conflict of interest. The federal agencies have policies that implement these regulations, but they're all different, so you need to be aware and cognizant of those and read those carefully. You might understand that the NIH having just rolled out their new regs on August the 24th, 2012. When we talk about conflict of interest, there are two important definitions you need to keep in mind. One is, what's a significant financial interest? That is something of monetary value, consulting, owning stocks, um, working with um, small businesses, having intellectual property rights. A significant financial interest becomes a conflict of interest when it impacts the design, conduct, and reporting of research. Institutions are required to have conflict of interest policies that do several things. First, they have to have a mechanism for faculty to disclose their financial interests, or actually it's investigators, not just faculty. An institution has to review that disclosure and make a determination about whether that conflict exists. And if it does, then they need to develop and implement management strategies and report that to the proper agency. I think it's important for you to understand that it's, I didn't say that conflicts were bad. In fact, the regulations talk about the value of, of industry partnerships, but it is important to manage those conflict of interest. Those management strategies might range from public disclosure of your, your significant financial interest all the way to um, divesting yourself of that relationship. If you have human subjects involved in a, with a conflict of interest, you need to pay particular attention to those because that's a high-risk study and they need to have, take special steps to manage a conflict of interest when human subjects are present. If you were in a sponsored research office, you might be wondering why you need to worry about a conflict of interest, and I think there are a couple of things that are important to take into account. First of all, at the time of proposal, that disclosure from the investigator must have occurred. At the time the award comes in, you need to make sure that the conflicts are managed, reduced, or eliminated. Um, and then if sometimes in your contracts or your grant awards, you might see terms about conflict of interest management or disclosure for a particular agency that you need to take care of. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about research misconduct. Um, institutions must have um, policies and procedures in place to deal with allegations of research misconduct. Research misconduct is defined as fabrication, falsification, or plagiarism. Fabrication is essentially making up the data. False I'm sorry, yes, falsification is manipulating research materials or changing or admitting those data. And plagiarism is using somebody else's ideas without giving them credit. In order for research misconduct to actually be um, decided when an investigation is going on, that it needs to be knowing, reckless, and intentional. So. That's what we have talked about today, is those two important policies. I hope that you um, understand and will explore those more. Re those two policies help institutions maintain public trust, um, demonstrate our commitment to um, in the research with, excuse me, demonstrate our ability to do our research ethically and objectively and to protect our human subjects. Thank you.